Hi, everybody. I'm Hector Garcia, and I'm an accountant. I'm going to show you something that I'm not very excited about, which is a glimpse into a future where AI-driven robo-accountants help small businesses with their accounting. I did a video similar to this um, a couple of weeks ago, and it got a lot of views and tons of comments. And the difference between this video and that video is that in this one, I'm actually going to pre-prompt it. And you're going to see how much better the quality of the AI gets when you give it some preliminary information. So let's set this up. Let's say, for example, I am a small business owner. I am in QuickBooks Online, and I want to categorize my expenses. The average small business owner actually accepts the suggestions that QuickBooks gives it because QuickBooks is pretty good at suggesting uh, expense categories for their expenses. However, sometimes when QuickBooks doesn't know something, it puts it into a category called uncategorized. So what, what I want to do, so the, the kind of the premise here, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, be working with all these uncategorized transactions and I'm going to ask the AI to give me the category. But the kicker here is, is that I'm going to give it uh, additional prompts prior to sort of prime it up and you're going to see the quality is going to be much better. The first prompt that I'm going to give it is I'm actually going to give it the chart of accounts. So I'm going to open my chart of accounts in QuickBooks Online. I'm going to click on Run Report. I'm going to export the report into Excel or CSV, typically to, to avoid confusion. This is the, the quality of the prompts are really important. Is I'm going to remove any piece of information that might not be, uh, um, uh, in this case, uh, even valuable. So I'm going to remove the account number, and I'm just going to leave account name and account type just because it's just easier and cleaner. And I'm going to export the chart of accounts into Excel. It could be Excel, it could be CSV, it doesn't really matter, okay? So once you have the chart of accounts in Excel, I'm just going to grab the chart of accounts itself. So just the, in this case, the account name and the account type, copy this. And then I'm going to have this in my clipboard ready so I can paste it into my AI as part of my prompt. So I'm going to switch back to bank feed. So we go straight into that. And then I'm going to open something called AI Studio by Google or Google AI Studio. And then in Google AI Studio, I'm going to click on here where it says uh, Streamline or Stream Real Time. And then I'm going to use this new experimental feature called Flash 2.0, Flash Experimental. And then I'm going to get, I'm going to pick which voice I'm going to use. I'm going to pick the last voice here just so we can make it a little bit different. And then all these other things, code execution, function calling. I don't even know what that means. So I'm just going to skip that. And what you're going to watch me do is you're going to watch me talk to the AI, give it prompts, and then ask it to help me categorize the expenses. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to click on show, show your screen. I'm going to pick uh, the entire screen here, click on share. And it's, hey, Google AI Studio, I'm going to need your help helping me categorize transactions in my QuickBooks online bank feeds. But before, I'm going to go ahead and paste my chart of accounts so you have it in your in your um, in your general information because we are going to be using only categories from this chart of accounts. Got it? Sure. I see that you're trying to categorize transactions in your QuickBooks online bank feeds, and you've pasted your chart of accounts for me to use. It looks like you're ready to start categorizing those transactions now using the chart of accounts you just provided. Is yeah. that correct? Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to give you a, keep a couple more context. I actually copy and paste it both the account name and the account type. The account type is something that you don't have to give me. This is just for your general context. And then you're going to see the bank description that comes from QuickBooks Online. And based on that bank description, you're going to search a database to understand who that vendor is. And then based on my chart of accounts, you're going to give me a category from my chart of accounts. And I never want you to give me uncategorized or miscellaneous. Got it? Okay. I understand you've provided me with your chart of accounts that includes both the account name and type, but you don't need me to use the account type. You also want me to use the bank description from QuickBooks to search my database to understand who the vendor is, and then, based on your chart of accounts, give a specific category, but you don't want an uncategorized or miscellaneous category. Is that right? B before we get started, is there anything else I can give you with context before we get started? Like what my business does or where it's located? Does that matter? That's a great question. Yes, providing information about what your business does and where it's located could help me categorize transactions more accurately, since some categories may be more appropriate for certain types of businesses or locations. Would you like to share that information? Yes. So I have a construction company 
in Miami with four employees and we do about $750,000 worth of annual revenue. Is that useful? Yes, that is useful information. So you have a construction company in Miami with four employees and you do about $750,000 worth of annual revenue. Thanks for the context. Now let's categorize your first transaction. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm in my bank feeds file, but before you give me the first one, I wanna give you one more set of instructions. I want you to be very short and brief and tell me just the category. Don't repeat the question back to me. Don't read the payee. I'm gonna open the transaction, read you the, the payee name so you know exactly what I'm talking about, and you're just gonna tell me what category to use. One last little caveat. If, if it's not glaringly obvious, the category from my chart of account, ask me a couple of questions so I can give you more context and you can help me figure it out. Got it? Yes, I understand. You want me to choose a category from your chart of accounts that you provided when given the pay? Okay, let's get started. This thing here called snookers. How do I categorize that? Okay, the transaction for snookers should be categorized as meals and entertainment from your chart of accounts. Could you just tell me really quick why? Sure, the payee name snookers suggests it is a restaurant or bar and since you would most likely be taking your employees or clients there, it falls under the meals and entertainment expense category. Okay, now I remember. I actually took my family there. How do I categorize this? If that is the case, since it was not a business meal, I would categorize it under uncategorized expense. So I don't want to use uncategorized expense. Is there something else we can use? Apologies, you are right you don't want to use uncategorized expenses. Based on the context, since it was a personal expense, you could create a new equity account called owner's draw or personal expenses and okay. use that. Okay. Would you like me to? Yeah, I'm here. So what do I do? Okay. Let's create a new account. For account name, we will use owner's draw. And for account type, please select equity. Okay. Oh, perfect. Okay. And detail type, what do I pick? I don't know what this is. For detail type, choose owner's equity. Got it. Do I do anything in opening balance? No, you can leave the opening balance blank for now. Then click save. Perfect. Okay, um, I go ahead and hit Great. save. Now the snookers transaction is correctly categorized as owner's draw. Got it. Next one, Mitch's West Side Bag. Okay, T-S-T-M-T-C-H-S -S West Side Bag. Could be for office supplies or tools. Could you confirm which it is? Mm, um, I think TST means toast, like a point of sale system. Okay, since TSTMTCHS West Side Bag is for a point of sale system, we can categorize this under computer supplies slash equipment on your chart of accounts. No, what I mean is I think TST is the uh, prefix that every transaction that's like in a restaurant has. So would that change anything? Thanks for the clarification. If TST is a prefix used for restaurant transactions, then we can categorize this one under meals and entertainment, since it is likely that you bought lunch or dinner from that restaurant. Perfect. Thank you. Now, what is this thing here? Send out. Okay. WWW. Sendowl.com is likely for a software subscription or online service that you use in your business. Do you know which it is? Um, it's like an online service. Okay, in that case, we can categorize the www.sendowl.com transaction under dues and subscriptions okay, on your chart of accounts. Got it. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, let's go ahead and add that. Okay, what about this thing? Uh, software Health Institute. Based on your chart of accounts, it looks like professional fees accounting would be the best category for the expense. What, what makes you say that? The reason I suggested professional fees accounting is that it is the most relevant category for services provided by the Software Health Institute based on your chart of accounts. Now, health institute has to do with accounting? You're right, a health institute would not typically be categorized under accounting. My apologies. Professional fees, legal fees is a better option from your chart of accounts. Listen, don't be afraid of suggesting new things or asking questions if it doesn't make sense. Okay, I understand. 
Given that it's a health institute, professional fees, legal fees does not make sense either. I suggest we create a new category called professional fees, health services for this expense if it is not available. Okay. Now, let me ask you a question. If, um, if I paid some special health membership for my employees, would that be co the correct category? That could fit into a professional fees, health services category, as a health membership for employees is a professional health service. Okay. What if, um, what if it, ha it was uh, a personal expense from the owner? What would that, what would that go under? If it's a personal expense from the owner, it would not be under expenses. It would need to go under equity as owners draw. Got it. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. Okay, what about this one, teachable.com? Okay, teachable. Com would be categorized as dues and subscriptions. Okay, it's, is that the correct one that's now? Yes, based on your chart of accounts, dues and subscriptions is the correct category for teachable.com. Okay, what about this thing that says uh, Mr. 01? Okay, the expense for Mr. 0.01 Aventura would be categorized as meals and entertainment. Okay, great, that's great. Uh, I'm going to switch over to only show on categorize because it looks like QuickBooks is doing a couple for me automatically. Okay, let's go down to this one, OnStar Services. Car slash truck expense. Beautiful, okay. Uh, the next one, want to look at this one, Minor's Dermatology. Okay, Minor's Dermatology is categorized as professional fees. Why, why is that? Because it's the best fit based on the chart of accounts you provided earlier. It is an expense category, and it is related to professional services that you received from a dermatologist. Okay, but it's a business. So if a dermatologist treated me, the owner, is that a business expense? You are correct. That is a business expense. However, per the chart of accounts you shared, the professional fees category is the most accurate category for this expense. Okay. I'll listen to you. I'm not sure if my CPA will agree, but let's, let's do that. Okay. The next one I want to look at this thing that says sum up Brian Allison. I don't know what that is. Okay. The sum up Brian Allison transaction should be categorized as office supplies. Why is that? Looking at your chart of accounts, office supplies is the most likely category for a payment to sum up for a business expense. Okay, fine. Okay. What about this Walmart? I would categorize this as purchases. Okay. And that's it. The reality is that sometimes it was wrong. Sometimes it was kind of right. Sometimes it suggested categories. Sometimes I interjected. Folks, this is the dumbest it'll ever be. It's going to get so much smarter, so much better. I'm not advocating for this. I'm not saying that this will replace accountants. But what I'm saying is that this will be an inches game. Okay. So as, as months go by and as years go by, this tech is going to get better, better, and better. And there will be a point in time where I believe that not just QuickBooks, but any sort of software company will adapt some sort of robo help before they go into the actual human help. And the human help might become the premium sort of premium version of their services because I think that industry-wide, the first line of defense for support, just like most uh, companies take away the phone number from their website and only make you get support via chat or via ticket or via email, I believe that this is going to be how tech companies are going to provide first line of defense support. They're going to be learning from it. We're going to be very frustrated the first couple of years. They're going to be listening to these transcripts, looking at them, learning from it, and they're going to make it better and better and better up to the point that you will probably not need a human. You probably not want to wait to, to, to see a human and you want that sort of on-demand um, help. So something to think about. Again, I don't think that immediately our, our, um, our, our clients are going to immediately flock to this. But I think very, very soon, this will be something that will be on the radar of both the clients, software companies, and accounting professionals. So hope you enjoy that content and it kind of opens your eyes and mind about what's coming in the future in the world of AI. If you're an accounting professional and you enjoy the content that I produce, 
consider coming down to Miami to reframe 2025. It's an event that my brother Carlos Garcia and I put together for accounting professionals. It's only for 150 accountants. We have over 100 tickets sold. And it's a two and a half day event that focuses on how accounting professionals are gonna deliver value and price their services in the backdrop of this whole AI transformation. So go to reframeaccounting.com. I'll drop a link in the description. The theme of the conference is called Pricing with Confidence. And we're gonna be talking about how AI affects us and what we need to do to be able to price our services correctly and get our customers to pay for the human value that we provide. Hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one.